What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. I'm back at you with another video. This is such a requested topic on this channel and that is what tools do I need as a snake keeper? Now, I will first go out and say that you do not need any tools as a snake keeper. However, there are some that make our job easier, safer, and just kind of overall more enjoyable. So let's dive right into the video. As snake keepers, what is the first thing that pops into your head as the tool that everybody wants to buy? If it is not a snake hook, I don't know what else it is. So, the number one thing everybody wants to buy are snake hooks. I don't know what the obsession is. I have an obsession. I have a whole collection next to me, and I'm going to talk to you guys about the different snake hooks that I use, the ones that I recommend, the ones that I don't really recommend, and the purpose of each one. I am also going to talk to you guys about forceps and feeding tongs. So these are, again, this is probably, these two items right here are probably my most used items that I have. A small little 18 inch snake hook and my feeding tongs. I have others. We're going to dive right into it. I have a whole table full of them. I'm not going to show you the table. I'm just going to show you the things that I pick up from the table. So let's dive right into it. I'll tell you what I like about certain ones and what I don't like about certain ones. Why I use some more than others. This video is not going to talk about how to use them. I want to be clear about that. I need to make this video, however, I just need to have somebody next to me filming me at the same time, or this is just not going to work. I've tried to make a how to use a snake hook video so many times. I'll use this one because it's lime green and you guys can see it. But I've tried to make a how to use a snake hook video so many times by myself and I just cannot do it. The angle is always wrong, the snake's moving, and it just becomes a waste of time. I end up turning the video off. So. I promise I will make you that video. Disclaimer with snake hooks, they are not to pick snakes up. This does not apply to venomous. This is just for boas, pythons, colubrids, whatever you may want to do. I'm going to call them the non-deadly, non-dangerous snakes that if they bite you, you're not going to die. So for our snake hooks, the ones that I like most, I really like, at least for boas, and even for my bigger Burmese pythons and stuff, I really like these small 18 inch hooks. I probably have four or five of them. I don't have four or five on my table next to me, but I probably have four or five and I keep losing them. I'll randomly put them on top of a rack. I'll put them in my racks like this and I'll lose them and I'll find them later. So I really like these small hooks because the purpose of a hook for me is just to wake the snake up, just to let them know I'm not food, you know, tap them on the head and that's it. Sometimes maybe use the hook to keep the snake's head out of the way. If you saw my Burmese python egg pulling video, you may have seen how I was using the hook just to keep the snake's head away from me, just block it. So I can get in, access the cage, do what I need to do, but the snake isn't gonna bite me or doesn't have access to bite me. So I really like these hooks because they're small, nimble, I can move them around, they're lightweight, and the only thing I don't like about the black ones is I lose them. So I bought this lime green one. They sell them in red, green, blue, this kind of oil finish, I don't know what you call it, it's like a rainbow metallic. They're really nice hooks and I like the size because it does everything I need to do. Again, we're not picking snakes up with this, we're just using it to make them become aware of us. And for most boas, if you are you know, 18 inches away, you're somewhat out of their strike range. Unless you have a massive boa or a Burmese python, then usually at that point, you can kind of sneak up to them. They're already hook trained already. So you can just use this to wake them up and get them out of the way. My second favorite hook is this one. I believe it is a 30 inch. Uh, who makes these? Everybody's gonna ask. I, they're just some no name off brand hook that I bought. There are differences in quality and I'm gonna get into that just bear with me in this video. I saw these at a reptile show and I just liked them. They were lightweight and you know strong, sturdy. They weren't you know weak. I will show you a couple of the older ones I have that they bent. They were just garbage hooks. But I really liked these. They're I think they're aluminum. Again, super lightweight, really easy to manipulate. This one is uh, 30 inches, I believe. And I have one other one that you just saw me use in my Burmese Python video. I actually thought that it was the same version of the black one. I bought this lime green one at the same time I bought this red one. I thought it was the same hook, but it's not. This one's slightly larger. I think this one's 36 and I don't like it. It's just too long for everything I'm doing. If you have massive reticulated pythons or something, you probably want a 36 inch hook. But for the most part, again, if I'm getting that close to a super aggressive snake, 
I probably don't have it here. Most of my snakes are really fairly calm when they become adults. It's just giving them that little nudge that, hey, it's okay, I'm just here to, to do my thing. So these are probably my, this one here is probably my favorite larger hook. I will use it for some of the larger snakes and occasionally I'll use it just to gently, again, pick up the front portion of the body, not to suspend the snake, but just to pick it up and just move them out of the way. If it's, especially if it's a really angry snake that you guys have seen on some of the videos. So we're gonna put those two back there and I'm gonna show you some of my older hooks. This hook right here was actually the first snake hook I ever got. I, I think it's made out of an old golf club and it's really sturdy. It's just a, a solid hook it's probably 25-ish years old. Again, first one I got. I do believe it. It's a 36-inch hook. I'm just going to compare it against this red one. It's a 36-inch hook. I love this hook, but it's kind of heavy. It's, you know, it's like holding a potter or a golf club, which is okay until you have it fully extended and, you know, you have this heavy hook on this side. It's just hard to control versus one of these new ones. I think this is probably aluminum or something like that. Really lightweight, really to manage. I like how it has this grip in the middle so I can kind of do whatever I need to do with it. Again, I wish I could make that snake hook video. It's just me filming. I will get somebody else and I will do this shortly, which is why I'm committing to making this video now. So again, one of my first hooks, I really love it. It's an old golf club, got at a reptile show. No name, no brand, I don't, just somebody made it. I bought this one because I kept losing that large one and I used to keep some much larger snakes. I wanted this because I thought it was gonna be the same thing. It looks the same, made out of a golf club, total garbage hook. You can see the bend in it. This is me, from me just picking up a little, just the front body of a snake. I could probably bend this, I'm not going to, because it's still a decent hook if I want to hold it, you know, halfway here. But it is just a pretty garbage hook. I think it was 20 bucks at a reptile show. I probably still have the tag on it. I, I don't go wild over the name brands. There are certainly some really fancy hooks and you can get into spending some big money on this stuff. Uh, Midwest Tongs make some really nice ones. I've seen them in person. Honestly, I like my cheap, no-name, off-brand reptile show ones better. They're just lighter, they're easier, and uh, just overall good. The last hook I'll talk about is this one. It's a collapsible hook. I have a couple of these hanging around. I bought them. My other snake hooks just fell because I took everything else off the rack for it, but uh, I think these are total garbage. I mean, I don't know what you would use this for. A baby corn snake. I don't know. I, I mean, I I gotta be honest. I keep it in my car because I feel like it's a cool field herp hook. If I go looking for, you know, at least I've done it. I've I haven't found them, but when I go looking for copperheads and stuff like that, I'll toss this in my pocket if I need it. I have it, but I haven't found one yet, so I haven't been able to tell you how good it is. It is totally flimsy. I could probably snap this by pushing on it with my finger. So it's definitely not a high quality hook, but I guess it's better than nothing. I'd equate it to something that's small, you know, just as small as a stick. It's kind of cool, it collapses, but other than that, it's pretty useless. Maybe if you have some baby snakes, like super baby snakes, you could extend it like this, and I don't know. But at that point, what are you using a hook for? So, other stuff that I use all the time are things for feeding. This, in my opinion, is probably overlooked by many and is way more important than a hook. Why I say that is a hook, again, I'm not picking a snake up with this. I could use anything for a hook. I could use an old clothes hanger, I could use a paper towel roll, I could use my ladder, whatever it is just to keep the snake out of the way. I could use a Tupperware bin. It doesn't matter, I don't need a hook. What I do need to keep myself safe and from getting bit are some feeding tongs. So the two that I use the most are these. And I've, they've kind of grown on me. So I have others that I'm gonna show you here. But the first ones that I liked the most were these little tiny, I think they're 12 inch forceps. I'm gonna get a little closer. You can see they're super, well, maybe if it stops focusing on my head, autofocus isn't gonna work, so I'll stay here. They're just, uh, you know, little forceps. I used to love these because they were simple. I could pick up a little mouse and wiggle it around, do what I need to do. And I then found these guys and i said oh these are nice i have more dexterity i have more control over holding the rodents i can grab it i can wiggle it and it stays really still and they're relatively the same size 
So these are pretty much, you know, the same, same size, but I got a little bit more control with these. So these kind of phased out. These became my new favorites until I tried these ones. Now, again, these are all just things I picked up at a reptile show. In my opinion, I just did, you know, reptile shows why I will never do them. This is the stuff to buy at a reptile show. In my opinion only. I don't buy supplies and bedding and stuff like that. I buy things that I can touch and feel and know that I like. So, you know, hides, things like that. I'm not there for that. I'm not there for heating. Maybe you can get there for thermostats if you got a good deal, but it's hard stuff that I can't really transmit disease, can't really carry bugs back with, none of that stuff. Now, I didn't like these at first because I really hated this, this little thing that keeps them closed. And over time, as I used them more, because what happened was I, I needed something that was a little bit longer than these, one, I kept losing these. I lose stuff all the time. So I was losing these and I needed another pair. I wanted something that was a little bit longer, but wasn't quite as long as this. We're going to get into this in a minute. So I didn't like it at first. And now that I've used them for a long time and I've gone back to these, I really actually enjoy this little, uh, this little crimp that keeps them closed. All it is is a crimp. You can push it, keeps them closed. You pick it up and, and it just opens really nicely. So I really like these and again, super cheap. I think it was like 10 bucks at a reptile expo. I recommend picking these up if you have snakes. I feed basically up to a large rat with these. It just gives me just enough distance that I can you know easily grab it, put it to where I need to, wiggle it around, and maybe I'll make a whole other video on how I use these specifically for feeding, but I really enjoy these. The other most common one that I use is this one. Now, a lot of people, venomous keepers, will use something like this to handle venomous snakes. Uh, we're not talking about that, and I would not recommend using these. I use them for grabbing bigger rodents. Once I get into now my adult boas and stuff that not necessarily I need the distance from, although the distance is nice because I have been tagged by adult snakes and it's not fun. Usually when I'm bit by an adult snake, it's when I'm opening the cage or doing something like that. It's not when I'm feeding, but it never hurts to get a little bit more distance. Now, what I use these for is something that's just kind of too heavy. If you put something bigger than a large rat, or what I'll call a large rat, because everybody's size is a little bit different, something bigger than a large rat, you know, go to a jumbo rat, rabbits, guinea pigs, any of that stuff, um, this just is really hard to control. It becomes very heavy. So this gives you a little bit more dexterity. Now I have a grip on it. It's kind of like a pistol grip here, but at the same time, I can grab onto my rodent. I can wiggle it around. I can support it by this hand, and everything's good. Now, for those super aggressive feeders, I do have some larger ones. I really don't like these. Uh, they're just, again, hard to control. And imagine you having, you know, a, a two pound, two pound, three pound rat or something weight at the end of this, and it's 36 inches away. It's really heavy and hard to control. The quality of this, now, I got this from the same people that make those hooks. I do not like the quality of their tongs. They're just cheap filling. This aluminum over here is cheap. It gets caught all the time. You know, I, I could probably get it. If I had something, sometimes it'll get caught on the end, close myself off. So these are somewhat garbage. I do really like this one and they were made by the same company. I got them at the same time, at least sold by the same people. But you can see there's definitely differences. This is, uh, they're both, I did just something about them, the cables, whatever it is, they're just cheap. Now, I do have one more that just fell, and I'm gonna go grab that because I wanna show it to you guys. This is the one that I wanted to show you. This is a very old feeding tongue. Uh, I don't know who actually makes it. You can see the springs up here are all old and rusted, or maybe you can't see it. And I bought these thinking they were gonna be a replacement for this or an addition for this because I keep losing them. Uh, it's just, this one is very well built. It's probably 30 years old. It was used when I bought it and it still works really well. Maybe it's not 30 years old, but it's all of 20 to 25 years old. Still works really well. Never gets caught when you clamp down. 
Again, I would not use it for handling snakes, specifically venomous snakes. They have other ones with pads and stuff on the top, wider grip. You'll, you'll damage a snake if you pick it up with this. So these are not for holding snakes. Same thing with hooks. They are not for supporting the body of the snake. You'll break their ribs, specifically if it's a big heavy snake on a small hook. They do make hooks for managing larger snakes. Midwest Tongs has them. They're nice, thick, wide hooks. In my opinion, kind of totally useless unless you're just totally afraid of a snake. And even then, it, I just they're usually useless. Don't waste your money on them. Uh, if you have, go for it. If you feel different, drop a comment. Tell me, hey, I use those things all the time and I love them. I've seen them, I've used them. I think they call them like their 50 inch python hook. I hated it. I would just never use it. I actually ended up stop using it. I used the lid of a, of a, a you know, a storage tote because I just did not want to use them. So with all that said, those are the hooks and tongs that I use and recommend. My two favorites that I have are, I guess, my favorites in the group that I have that I use all the time are going to be my 18 inch feeding tongs or 24 inch feeding tongs. I believe it's 18 inch because this is an 18 inch hook. Yeah, so 18 inch feeding tongs, my 18 inch snake hooks, my 30 inch snake hook for a larger uh, animal. And then I believe these are 15 inch forceps. So these are the ones that I use all the time, every week while I'm down here. I have probably five of these little 18 inch hooks because I'm here, I think it's a perfect size. I, I lose them, the guys who come help me clean stuff sometimes, they'll use them and that's what I got. So that's what I would recommend if you're gonna spend your money, we're talking probably you know 15 to 20 bucks, 10 to 15 bucks. This was probably $20 to $30 at the most. If you're spending more than $30 for a hook like this, a snake show, you're getting ripped off. And then these might be about $25 to $30. So all that said, easy stuff, easy use tools, great stuff. I wish I had an Amazon link and I could find one that I like, but I don't want to mislead you guys and have you buy stuff that I wouldn't buy myself. I've never bought stuff off Amazon that I like. I've never really tried it either. I just don't want to take the chance. I know a vendor at the shows, at my shows that I like to buy from. So with all that said, if you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button. I now have a Patreon, which I said in my last video, my wife made me do it. My guys who come over here, help me clean work for me. They said I got to do it. I finally caved and did it. I appreciate all the support on the Patreon so far. Thank you guys very much. We're gonna put your names in the description, things like that, different little promotions. And if you see anything on my website, www.jasonsexoticreptiles.com that you like, make sure you buy it before somebody else does. I get that all the time. People get so angry at me. They're like, hey, you sold the snake we were talking about. I told them I have no control. I could be talking to you right now and somebody could be on there buying it. So if you see something that you cannot live without, make sure to buy it when you see it. Otherwise, shoot me a message, Instagram, Facebook. I do not really respond to inquiries on snakes. Like does, uh, I should say general questions. Is this, what morph is this? Can you help me with care? I try to direct people back to here. I'm just running out of time, but that is what my Patreon is for. So if you have general questions, morph identification, how to breed, whatever that is, join my Patreon. I do one-on-one -on -one calls, half hour, one hour, group calls. It's all different tiers, all different levels. Make sure to check it out. If you like this video again, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit your bell notification and smash that like button. Until next week, I appreciate you guys watching.